If you look at cities and cities and counties, and that's primarily where we work is in the city county layer, uh, what do they have to contribute to a process like this? Because it's not typical, right? We aren't used to necessarily as telco people, and I still have enough telco in me, I consider myself that. Um, we aren't used to having those conversations with cities and counties. We aren't used to collaborating necessarily. Um, obviously, most people in this room do a much better job communicating day in, day out basis with, with their own communities. But in those neighboring communities where some of the larger incumbents are, that's probably not happening. Uh, so, so, so what can the cities and the counties bring to you? They typically have champions. So they've got somebody in their community that realizes that next generation broadband is really important. Uh, that's typically somebody, it can be somebody from economic development. We see that a lot. That's a big driver. Uh, it, can be, it, it can be elected officials. Uh, sometimes it's staff, uh, IT, and primarily IT staff, that sees the benefit for two reasons. A, they have issues with their connectivity, getting from place to place to service their own needs. And B, since they are the technology people in these smaller in, in these smaller communities, you know, they're the people who get who, who get calls when those laptops don't work, even if they're just a friend. And so they get comments about lack of service, lack of speed, uh, hear things from businesses in town, things like that. Uh, so there, so there's a variety of local champions out out there. The important thing is, if you're going to engage in this sort of activity, is finding those people pretty quickly in the process. Uh, and make sure that there's a face, a local face to that, um, to, to that project. So coming in as somebody from the outside, that's really difficult. You have to build that credibility. So having a local presence, somebody that really understands the community, understands the pitfalls of that community, understands the uh, benefits of that community, really helps you out and helps you form your story when it's all said and done. Uh, these local champions in all these communities really have a passion to make sure that their communities stay stay relevant. So, you know, populations in rural parts of the state decline. Uh, they want to change that. They want to at least break that even, if not move it back up the other way. So, the, and they do really see that there's opportunity for them to bring people back to their communities. Uh, when it when you talk about champions, you talk about the ties that these uh, that these cities and counties have. They're kind of connected to everybody, right? So they talk to the economic, the economic development people. They talk, talk to the schools in their schools in their area, uh, healthcare and public safety. So they have a good idea of what's going on. And you know, the nice thing is they know all the right people. So uh, for us, that's really important. It saves us a step of step of, of discovering those people. If you've got a champion to kind of help you get through that process, uh, and they have some financial resources that you might not be privy to, uh, you know, they've got bonding authority. And more and more cities and counties are looking at using their bonding authority to make sure they have a next generation network. Uh, they, have, they offer all, <coughs> up, up, um, other kinds of benefits uh, right away. Uh, we worked in a project in western Minnesota with Baldwin Telecom and the town of Troy. Uh, one of the contributions from the town of Troy was they, they waived all their, all their right-of-way fees. And that was a pretty substantial number when it was all said and done, because the way they run their right-of-way over there is they charge by a actual access drop to the house. So it had been about 1,700 customers that, that, that there was going to be this fee attached to it. The, the county waived that. That makes the project easier just to get it done. Uh, what, are, what are municipalities looking for? Uh, they're, they're looking for some expertise. <laughs> Most of them come into this realizing they aren't a telephone company, they aren't a cable TV company, they aren't a, and they aren't an ISP. They're looking for somebody to help them. Uh, that's why they engage us a lot of times, is because they don't know who that person is, an outside consultant who has some, who, who has some connections and knows, and knows these things is beneficial. Uh, but they're really looking for a partner that also knows those things. So, uh, Someone who has a local, someone who has a local, a local reputation. So, you know, back after the telecom app, a lot, a, a lot of the incumbents built that town next to them, and why did they build them? Because there was, there because because they were a known entity already, right? People people knew what knew the services they provided. They knew how well they provided the services, and they said, "Boy, it should be nice to have that here too." And I think we can parlay the same thing that happened when we did those CLF buildouts. You're already in a community. You've got a reputation, and it's a very good reputation, typically. And uh, you can you can definitely leverage that. I mean, we see that 
when we work on projects and we bring a new a, a new provider into an area next to the area there, they're like, oh, well, finally, we'll finally get these guys. We wanted to have them instead of what we had before. So I think there's some real, real benefits. Um, and cities and counties are looking for an exit. So <coughs> some of them want to see this as a cash cow or as a revenue stream coming into them. Um, but not all of them. Some of them realize that if they can just make it happen, if they can get the services into their communities, that's pretty good. That's a good day. Um, and they don't want to have the long-term problems of uh, upgrading technology, of you know, dealing with the regulatory issues and things like that. So I think there, so many counties and many cities are good are good partners in that regard. Uh, also, we all know it's a it's a industry of scale. And so starting out in your little 5,000 person city, trying to do this by yourself as a city, there's just enough, there's really not enough scale to make that happen sometimes. So, so, what, so what you folks can help provide is, is, is some of that scale. You're really leveraging uh, what you have. And you know, at least the backbone services, you, you probably aren't adding a lot of extra capital into that. Uh, so what do they think that you can bring? And, and what have we seen in the past that, uh, that, that service providers like, like you folks can bring to the equation? There's that operational expertise. So you guys know how to roll trucks. You know how to dispatch. You know how to talk to the customer. Um, you understand your services. You already have a knock in place. Um, that's real value. That's all things that if a city or a county decided, hey, we're going to do it on, the, on their own, they, they're either doing one or two things, right? They're either contracting that out to somebody or they're learning that all themselves. And we all know time to market, and the longer it takes to get those services actually up and running, it can really affect that business case. So uh, the reason we like the operational expertise and the backbone services uh, is that typically we can, in a public-private partnership, we can start providing services faster than if a city or county decides to go up their own and build everything themselves. That's just a lot of time. We all know if you're gonna build your own switch, you can build your own head end, you're going to create your own ISP infrastructure, that there's regulatory hurdles, there's content hurdles, all those sorts of things that take a lot of time and a lot of effort that while you're building up that network, those things are still happening. Uh, most of the projects that, work at, that we're working on right now, once we start putting fiber in the ground, because those backbone services are already there, we're turning up customers really behind the plot. And there's some real benefit to that. Cash will happen sooner, and we don't need as much money operationally to make these projects work. Uh, you provide sales and marketing expertise. You already know how to talk to customers about, bro about, about broadband, about cable TV, about the bundle. Uh, there's, you, 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 you have the staff in place, you have marketing collateral that's, that's, all, that's already developed that you can utilize. So I think that's really important. You understand the financial piece of the business. Uh, and running a city or a county and the way they look at their financials and how private sector or cooperative to might look at their financials are completely, can be completely different. So while they might think they're okay, you, you can provide some real world expertise on what those financials really look like. Uh, and then you have some additional funding sources that maybe you can help facilitate in a partnership. Uh, the, the, the USF dollars, you know, we're still waiting to see what happens with that. I think there's some ability to leverage those dollars. Uh, just regular loan programs that you folks might be involved with today in some of your coming territories. So there's that same sort of opportunity to maybe leverage that. Uh, so what is a typical process? And this is hard because there is no typical. Um, we've done multiples of these over the years. Not one has been exactly the same. The product kind of ends up being the same in the end, but the process that you go through is completely different depending how educated the city or county might be in the first place. And also when you bring the private partner in. So if you bring them in closer to the front end, you have the ability to kind of make things happen as you go along. If you do all this stuff and then at the end you say, now I'm going to go find a partner, then that just extends the timeline to get things finished. But uh, typically, a city or county will, will, will engage a consultant, hopefully us, uh, and they really want us to create a feasibility study. And what they're looking there is they're looking for somebody who can speak both languages, who, who, who understands what you're doing, um, can talk to you, but can also talk to the county and city and put it in a language, language that they understand. Um, I think generally there's a lot of talking around, over, and under each other just because you don't know each other's businesses when it's all said and done. And so we help facilitate some of that. Um, 
this, what, what the municipality really does is they create all of, all of that momentum to get people excited about services. So um, they do community meetings. Uh, they help facilitate meeting with existing providers. It's important to them that even if they aren't going to, even if they don't think there's the opportunity to work with an existing provider in their immediate community, that they at least have those discussions. They want to make sure that when somebody on the back end comes and says, well, did you ever talk to the, did, did you ever talk to CenturyLink? Did you ever talk to Charter? They want to make sure they can check that off the list. If you don't, they just think they open themselves up to the opportunity to, to be criticized, and rightfully so, probably. Uh, so, they, so they facilitate those meetings, and it's always interesting. We get them to show up sometimes, and sometimes we don't. When you don't get them to show up, that's, that's kind of an, that's, a, that, that's an implicit thought on their process that they're not really interested in that community anymore. That's the way the cities and the counties read it, is if, it, is if the existing providers aren't, aren't even willing to show up to a meeting, how could they ever be a partner? So that's why it, it's important if, if you have these situations, which happen much less in, less, in, less in areas because you're doing a good job, um, if they call, just call them back. Go meet with them. It, it's they're they're really trying to learn the things to make to really make your life easier too. They want to understand what you're doing. They want to be able to communicate from economic to, from economic development perspective what's going on. Uh, then we typically do a lot of partner vetting. So it's a pretty easy exercise when you, when it's all said and done. It's really a dot exercise. So city or county, one dot. Who are the incumbents? Who are the so? Who, who are the incumbents within the service area? Might they be potential partners? That's a series of dots. Then who surrounds them? You pull out the old, the you pull out the old exchange map. You know what are those co-ops or are those independents around them that might want to do that? Uh, we look at cable TV companies. We haven't yet to have a cable TV company really bite on this because typically they just don't want to do the world, and that's not in their and that's and that's not in their game plan. Uh, so, also, when they're looking for these potential partners, they're trying to defer some of their dollars that they're spending on these, on these feasibility studies. So, uh, they're typically looking for a partner who will contribute some financial uh, dollars into the project so that, so it's, so it's not as much of a burden. It's nice as a service provider partner coming in and putting those dollars in, you put a stake in the ground that says, yeah, you know, we aren't just interested, we're putting money into this thing. And logically, it does help because if you put money in, there's there's a there's a real commitment to make sure that before they do anything else, that they talk to this partner, and uh, and, and really make sure that they could be a partner before they look at any other options. So I think that's I think that's a great opportunity. Can we just go back one more? Did I miss something there? Uh, oh, and then they by doing all this, they 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 typically use that use all that activity to then apply for a grant. And you know, we're fortunate enough in in the state of in the state of state of Minnesota to have the Blandon Foundation who has a nice job. If you think about the dollars that they've given to communities and then the networks that have gotten built behind them and a lot of those public private partnerships, man, right? uh, that you know that is a good that's a good use of their money. And also it's a good good lever for you. You you make a relatively small contribution to a project. And it, and, it get, and it gets matched twice, essentially, by the city, the county, and then by the So if you're in the rural area, that's a, that's a great opportunity. 